Austria. And they were pretty much ready to go on the start. Go. And Australia and New Zealand at Henley. Always a good race. Always a sort of rivalry we like to see, isn't it? And we see the, uh, the smaller man, Dunham, on the right of the shot there, weighing in at 11 stone 9, going off a higher stroke rate. But Girdleston not letting him have it all his own way. And you can imagine Cam in the longer race, into the heavier conditions, um, you'd like to think he's going to be able to deliver against those conditions and, and eke out a bit of a margin all the way down the track. This is one of those days where the lightweights really hope there's going to be a tailwind <laughs> and they're going to be able to take us heavyweights down in front of a big crowd. But in nice, calm conditions like this, you can see it there. Cam Girdleston on the top of the shot in the yellow boat just still moving really a nice quite high stroke rate really light and easy around the finish there and getting onto the next stroke yeah, and you can see, clearly see that the headwind is coming there how the flags are flapping and what they'll feel like to the rowers it, it just makes everything feel a little bit heavier makes everything happen a little bit slower and for the heavier man and woman in fact you can then leave off man more when we look here of the the lightweight of dunham here in the front of the shot he is keeping his rate really high he's working hard to stay on top and stay in touch with cam there but it's cam with his length and his strength and his 14 stone that is pressing away and what it looks like he's able to do there at the top of the shot cam girdleston is just get a little bit more distance per stroke going on what do you think james yeah absolutely i mean he's uh you know he's going to have a slightly longer stroke and so more time in the water to uh, propel the boat forward but rowing very similar to the way he did in the quad. I mean, those guys, I thought they rode beautifully and um, really sweetly moving around the back. And he's, and he's doing that in the single. And Greg, you had a go in the single, didn't you, for a while? Well, I'm glad you asked me that. It was 20 <laughs> years ago, in fact, in this very event, the Diamond Skulls, where Jamie Coburn and I raced on semi finals day. Um, and I was able to, on that occasion, get ahead of Jamie before he went on to be world champion that year. And then I raced uh, certain Peter Haining in the final. Um, which was a, a real crowd pleaser and, and I enjoyed every second of it. <laughs> I'm sure you did. And I'm enjoying this seeing the Australian out in front of the New Zealander, as so, it should be. So James Tompkins, tell us what you think really is good sculling then and when you said he's sculling the way he does in the quad. Give us some insight because um, we love watching you race. We love the way you were able to move within a boat. So try and give us some insight for people who are lucky enough to hear you today. Well, I don't know. Well, I didn't scull that very well. And I don't, uh, I don't know too much about sculling, but I do know how to move a boat. And it's just the efficiency. We used to like to be really quiet through the front turn and, and not do too much in that first foot and then accelerate through the stroke. And I know um, these guys, when they were in the quad, they were certainly trying to do that as well. And then at the other end of the stroke, being really efficient around the back turn and just allowing the boat to continue to run. And so you, not necessarily putting more effort into the water, but what you do, you get maximum benefit from. So when we look at Cam Girdleston here, and you say being really quiet around the front and in the first foot, how do you do that and what's he doing there? Well, that's a very good question. Uh, he's placing the blades very gently into the water and he's allowing them to lock up before he drives. So I find that really interesting because so many coaches go, you know, I remember the coaching used to say sting and float yeah. and you try and sting the water. But you're saying put the blades into the water really gently. What's the difference? Well, we were the, we were the complete opposite. We wouldn't worry. We were very accurate into the water at the catch, but we wouldn't worry about that first first couple of feet. We just almost let it drift. It would feel like it was drifting, and then we'd haul on it. And James, I'm curious. Your biog says you're two meters tall. You barely fit in our commentary box here. So that first foot was that something because of the length you were capable of getting of your the actual lever you had? Was that something that you work at throughout? Oh, we worked at it um, uh, all the time. In fact, it was Theo Kerner, the famous East German coach that came to Australia in 1989, that changed our rowing completely from sting and float to our, our motto was middle and finish. Forget about the front turn, just middle and finish. What a, what a lovely lesson that is to think about. And again, I do think about a time when I was able to race this single 20 years ago, and I took a very much similar sort of approach. I remember um, I'm tempted again to talk about rugby on a day like today, but I, uh, particularly watching a New Zealand crew, but how I used to think about holding the, the blades in my hand like it was a rugby ball 
and then just gently letting go of the ball, letting go of the handle, letting the, the handle come up into the water and then press and push with the feet. But enough of me talking about <laughs> my sculling technique because we What's have to here? go here with Gerdelson, Matthew, he's stopped. He's literally... Matthew Durnham, who's come storming back in front of us for New Zealand and looks like he's come up to level as we come up towards Remenham Club. Oh my god, you see this sometimes on this Henley course, single scholars come out here, you say, James, you know, the quarter having a year off, perhaps he doesn't have the fitness that is required to come down this course, and every now and again, we saw it with Mahe Drysdale last year, he rode himself to a sixth standstill in the um, final of this event, and look now, the lighter New Zealand rower, he's up there, his rate's high, and his Australian opposition, he's just paddling. Well, Cam Girdleston's now made it look quite slow and it's now looking like quite hard work. He's lost that dynamism when you compare across it. He looks like he's really struggling there. Really struggling. I'm not sure what's going on. Because he, he would have had two or three lengths at uh, well, early times. Well, he had a few wobbles here earlier on in the race. This is just after four, Lee. So we've gone back and you see him there catching a weight just after four. The boat goes from side to side. I don't know if he maybe... He loses some boat speed, but whether that just then throws him and, and maybe he's... I've no tweaked his back or something because it looks like the, the power's just gone a little bit from his from his strokes and now he's trying to stay in there and he's trying to keep long powerful strokes but oh, it looks it's gonna hard. Feel a long it way. looks hard now for Cam Girdleston. Yeah the start of the race here is really sweetly moving through the front and back turns now it's uh, it's heavy weather heavy work how far have they got to go? They've still got about two minutes to go here so I'm looking like this one's done Cam Girdleston whatever happened to him there that that hitting of the bad water i can't think it's just that it's taken the boat speed it must have done something that's really hurt him and, uh, and greg i hope he's all right because you look at him and that close-up shot he's really blowing he's really blowing out of the finish you can see there he's looks like he's almost struggling for air and i'm sure the umpire will be richard stanhope that is will be watching him very very carefully because something's happened to this olympic silver medalist that he is finding it so hard to row and this is tough now for his opposition because what do you do don mclean his coach will be watching him um, and worrying about where is going on with his athlete and just look at those faces in the launch you can see his don's face there he's kind of got a stone stony look as you'd always have because he'll be worried about what's happened now to cam yeah it was very disappointing whether it's his just a, a fitness thing or whether those conditions got to him but um maybe he just went out too hard too early well i, I did say he had a year off and uh, this was well, uh, i did notice that he, maybe he recently is. he recently got engaged and he had the engagement party only two weeks ago oh uh, well it was a big it was a big party were you Clearly. there huh? no i wasn't <laughs> i wish i was <laughs> well now we see him coming down towards the line and it's this win for matt durnham from new zealand who was the lightweight single sculler seven two weeks ago in poznan and now he's going to be in the henley final see him coming down towards the line enjoying the, the crowd and let's hope everything's okay for cam girdleston as he's coming in in front of the floating grandstand at the finish and what a shame very good result there for dunham he'll be meeting grazer stimpson in the next round but that's not how we want to see racing here at the gallery we want to see athletes at their best able to perform at that best and for whatever reason cam girdleston didn't have that today so a confirmation there in the diamond challenge skulls that win for dunham of new zealand over girdleston of australia